Did you know that pretty much every TV show and every movie is filled with negotiations? So today we're gonna break down one and Frankly, I don't know what it is because my producers have picked it out and they haven't showed it to me. So it looks like it's from the show Euphoria, which I think is on HBO and which I've never seen. Good to see you. Uh, I would love to present you with a, a business opportunity. Okay. I'm in high school, right? <laughs> um, and say, you know, all my friends, Jamie, Amy, and Lainey, also have a GPA over 3.7. Hmm. And, and Lori, these are, these are girls that you would never expect in a million years to be selling. Hmm. -mm. Look, I'm a dreamer, you know, and, and Steve Jobs is my hero. And I was just thinking, you know, what if there was a foolproof system? So I don't know what's on offer here. Um, what I do know is that Rue is definitely taking a pulling at the heartstrings approach to whatever it is she is trying to sell. Um, which, you know, so far seems pretty compelling, although I have to say, Lori's character here still isn't so interested. I'm interested, so let's keep watching. To sell, you know. <laughs> Without it. Okay, this is definitely the clueless talking here. Somehow, I have this bad feeling that whatever it is Rue wants to sell isn't a great thing to sell because she won't say what it is. So maybe for my kind of rated PG mind, it's a blessing not to know. Hmm. So let's say, hypothetically, of course, uh, we were able to pay Jamie, Amy, and Lainey $500 a month to be runners. Now as collateral, we would upload their phones to a cloud that I own. Why would you want that? Ah, oh, that's a good question, Lori. May I? <laughs> uh, well, you see, even though Jamie, Amy, and Lainey have stellar GPAs, there's also things on their phones that they don't want the world to know about because it would probably jeopardize their ability to get into Yale, Columbia, Harvard, my top choices. Uh, plus, uh, if they ever got busted, we're looking at six to 12 months of juvie. Intent to sell is a way bigger sentence. Not if you're- Okay, I've decided that what's being sold is illegal and would keep you out of some really elite schools. So. As somebody who served on the admissions committee at Harvard Law School for a bunch of years, I want to say that I kind of wish I knew people did stuff like this because maybe we'd have to step up our background checks. Oh, by the way, Lori, what an interesting negotiator. Looks totally disinterested, asks these kind of open-ended questions, and is letting Rue do all of the selling work here. Right? If you were analyzing in this moment who has the power, I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but in this moment, I'm definitely going with Lori. Under 18. Hmm. Which is nothing to having your entire life released and ruined on the internet, so their incentive to snitch is basically reduced to zero. This is an amazing plan. You're a genius. Thank you. <laughs> it's true. I'll front you a 50K suitcase. Don't do it. You're too much of a f up. Maybe we should start smaller. 10K? Deal. That was very mature, Rue. If you pay each girl a thousand, you can flip it for 20 and that's seven K profit. Three to me, four to you. Uh, thank you, Laura. You won't regret this. <laughs> you pay up and re-up in a month. Uh, terrific. Rue. If you screw me, I'll have you kidnapped and sold to some real sick people. I always find a way to make my money back. Wow. Lori's like the modern day mafioso here. Nothing like, you know, in negotiation we call this making sure you build your deal with some enforcement provisions. Sounds like um, there's a pretty big enforcement provision built into this one. Oh man, so much to analyze here. So Lori, the picture of a difficult negotiator here, right? Totally disinterested, basically walks away from Rue, doesn't establish eye contact, asks these amorphous kind of open-ended questions. Rue, right, hangs in there, 
she makes what in negotiation we call a yesable proposition, right? So at the end of the day, I mean, Lori basically says the plan is brilliant, but here's such an interesting moment to analyze. Lori makes this offer of 50K and then, thank you the magic of TV, we get to hear the internal voice of Rue. And the internal voice does something that from my experience, many negotiators do in real life. The internal voice sounds to me like the voice of an imposter. And it says, you're actually not worth that much. Like if you say yes to this and you fail to deliver, it's gonna be worse. Rue ends up negotiating against herself. She actually cuts the deal in half, or actually less than half. Maybe we should start smaller. 10K, deal. It turns out that at the end, if she doesn't follow through, it's gonna be bad for her anyway. So if we were coaching Rue, right, at that moment when you're in a negotiation and an offer is made to you and you're thinking, wow, this is better than I expected, or maybe I can't deliver here, right? What do you do? So the first thing you want to do is literally silence the internal voice that is questioning whether you're worth that or not. Then to the degree you have any information about what the current market standard is, I'm so, so guessing here that there's probably not a lot of information on the current market standard for illegal activity. But if you do have that information, you might wanna draw upon that. But if not, maybe you want to update your own sense of what you're worth. In fact, you might even say something like, wow, 50K, I gotta tell you, we think that's a little bit low. What else do you have to offer? Let me also say one more piece of advice for Rue here. Lori is a woman of few words. And for many negotiators, they feel really uncomfortable in silence. But if I were coaching Rue here, I'd actually say, listen more and speak less. Because she gives a lot more information than she needs to give here. For example, when she shares that all of these friends of hers are applying to Columbia and wherever, Yale and Harvard, she's literally armed Lori with this way to ruin these other people's lives. It's not information Lori needs to know. It's not information Lori asks for. Um, if I were coaching Rue, I would say, sit in the silence, ask more questions, and make Lori do a bit more of the talking. If I were coaching both of them, let me just say, I don't really recommend negotiating over illegal behavior. Um, so I'm just trying to break this down from a negotiation perspective. Um, but boy, there's a lot of richness here. This is um, actually really related to negotiation advice. I haven't done any videos on this quite yet. Um, it's, it's on negotiation ethics. Many of us at times in the scope of our negotiations might be asked to do something illegal. And that means we need to find a way to get ourselves out of the situation. It turns out that the person, you know, being asked first to do something illegal seems to be Lori, and Lori seems like, again, I don't know anything about the show, but her whole life seems to be a story and illegal. So these are two people thinking about or wanting to do something illegal together. The question for all of you is, how do you handle a situation when someone asks you to do something? Maybe it's not illegal, but it feels wrong. It feels unethical. How do we extricate ourselves out of this? And I think there are a few possible ways, right? One is you could just say no, but if you're worrying about offending the other person, you might say something like, I really wanna give that some thought, or I made a commitment to myself not to say yes to anything that was on the table today, and so I'm gonna to have to take that under advisement. Or I wanna um, talk to another colleague just to make sure I understand the consequences and contours of what it is you're asking me to do. Obviously, if it's someone that you know or are in relationship with, you may decide to not so much negotiate, but rather initiate a difficult conversation with them about your own concerns about the activity and how you might approach the problem in a way that doesn't present ethical questions or invitations to do something immoral or illegal. So if you enjoyed this Reacts video, keep on watching this next one, which is on Inside Out.
So don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. And if you have some clips that you want me to analyze, please drop them into the comments box so I can take a look myself. I'm Bob Bourdon. Thanks for hanging out, and let's keep negotiating. Here's the Inside Out video.